Where were you when this verdict was returned? I was uh, in the courtroom. I was there. Um, funny thing was, we didn't know that the verdict was going to be delivered. We'd heard that there was a note, mm -hmm. and we were urged back in the courtroom. And we were hanging, my daughter and I were hanging with E. Jean and her niece and her sister and the lawyers. We went through the metal detector again. We sat in the back of the, on the bride side. The press was on the other side. And it's a big courtroom, mm -hmm. as you probably know. So it seemed that E. Jean and her team were way up front. And um, when we saw uh, Alina Haba and Mike Medea walk in, we saw Sean Crowley mouth the word verdict and then we all started holding hands and and squeezing uh i've never seen anything like it it was by far the most dramatic 15 minutes of my life and until the four person handed well uh, including when she handed her envelope to the clerk who opened it up had trouble reading something, handed it to Judge Kaplan, and now I'm imagining all kinds of bad things, and Judge Kaplan asked her, is that an M, and what does it stand for? And she said, yes, million. Oh, that's that, before you, oh, wow. Yeah, that's before everything else was read. So that was a very good indication that I could let go of my daughter, my friend's hands, and perhaps live another moment. Wow, I've never, you know, in a civil uh, verdict return, I've never heard that tip that way. It's no. always the number comes out, and then more numbers comes out, as, as was here, about oh, three wow. or four numbers come out, right. because there are three or four different things they're, re they're returning money for. Right. And so you're sitting through every one of those, and every one of them is coming with the word million, and they're getting bigger. And they're getting bigger. And of course, that M was a good sign, but also watching the jury, because I'd mm -hmm. never gotten to see them. I had seen the first jury in May. This jury looked completely different. Of course, you Seven can't- men, only two women. That's and right. one of the women was the four person. As it was in the mm -hmm. first jury, and in the first trial, and Afterwards, Judge Kaplan made the most, I'm sure you read it, the most moving speech mm -hmm. about this jury's uh, duty mm -hmm. and what they did for justice. And it really is the moment when, after we all burst into tears, you think, we don't understand, civilians don't understand civics. We need to do it. It's not just an annoying day that you leave work and then go have Chinese food because Chinatown is nearby. It really is something so important. And this jury obviously took it so seriously because the numbers they came up with were not numbers that had been discussed, um, were, were obviously something they thought about. Yeah, and in these federal courtrooms, there are two things that happen that are, that are boilerplate. Uh, but if you listen and pay attention, they are moving to the point of tears. One is, as you say, uh, the judge's comments to jurors after a verdict. Not the, inst the instructions are yeah. one thing, yes. but after a verdict. And when they express, as all judges do, their gratitude for their service. And, and the other that happens in those same courtrooms are citizenship ceremonies mm. in which federal yes. judges are swearing in new American citizens. And if you're ever in the courtroom for one of those, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's a deeply moving event. And, and this is one of those moments where you realize why they built this building, why, they, mm -hmm. why, they've, why they've done all this work to create the jurisprudence that allows these kinds of days to happen. What, what was the first thing E. Jean said to you, you said to E. Jean? <laughs> well, we, we screamed, but she said to me, where were you just before? I said, I was sitting with you. She said, what? She must have been right. in such a panic. Yeah, that's the way it is, yeah. She had yeah. no idea. Right. We actually took our shoes off at the same time to push them through. The, she had no, mm -hmm. remember, uh, no memory of that. But, um, you know, she said, we did it. 
she seemed almost stunned, almost unable to uh, unable to believe it. And and uh, early in this week of trial, I think she was worried that somehow this was a trial she could lose. And this wasn't really a trial she could lose because the fact of his assault was unimpeachable. So that once that is established, no matter how hard mm -hmm. the other side whines and carries on, that, that's not well, for grabs. That's not for relitigation. Except Trump did try to relitigate it. A hundred percent. The denials, the Trump denials, were part of the evidence because that's part of the defamation, right? Right. And so it was part. So this jury heard and knew full well. Donald Trump denies that anything ever happened between these two people. Uh, they they knew that that's that side. And he they was he was whining it. Right. Right uh, there. I don't know her. I never met her. I mean, come on. Yeah, and there are juries that come back and return these minimal... Uh, the, the juries come back and return $1 for the yes. plaintiff, right? So there could yes. have been one of those insult verdicts returned. Uh, it, it, you, I feel like you never really know until that jury no, speaks. No, and also Judge Kaplan, in his very thorough charging orders, did say you can offer her a dollar. Mm -hmm. You could offer her more. Right. You know, and we're all trying to parse it and think, is he saying she's only... Right. Gonna get a dollar, right. and what could happen here? But um, I think that E. Jean herself and the two great lawyers who argued and rebutted and cross-examined uh, the other side did an outstanding job. And I have to say, I've gotten to know the associates and mm -hmm. the paralegals who work at um, at Robbie Kaplan's firm, and they're they're really it was such a stunning act of not just sisterhood, but brotherhood. And it was it was for E. Jean. She inspired them. I know she's going to demur and say it's not about me, but you had to have a person of that kind of courage and fearlessness. I mean, you've known her mm -hmm. for a million years. She's one of those dames yep. that Rosalind Russell or Katherine Hepburn would have played mm -hmm. in the 40s. She is She's just that that brave gal. Yeah, and, and for us, uh, meeting her as writers in New York, she was somebody we all looked up to yeah. before we ever met her, before you ever had a conversation Well, she with was her. so stylish. Her yeah, writing was so stylish. Everything, yeah. everything. And, yeah. and so, so one of the interesting things is trying to convey who this person really is to a jury who's never met her and do it within these really strict rules of evidence that don't feel like a way you get to know someone. Yes, that's true. And there, it, it would be uh, disingenuous to, to pretend that she's not eccentric. She's mm -hmm. also very eccentric. Uh, I think my daughter says the first time she met her, she was wearing jodhpurs and a pith helmet. I mm -hmm. mean, you never know exactly <laughs> what she'll appear as um, with her daring do. But, but she is a little bit odd. And you have to say that, again, two things can be true. A person could be eccentric and unusual and also be honest. Yeah. That's and, it. And, uh, you, the Trump lawyers, when you were on the stand in the first case, and, and, and you know, this second case uh, was a validation of everything that was in the first case. Right. This jury validated all of those findings. But those Trump lawyers, when you were on the witness stand, tried to tear you apart uh, because they suspected you were a Democrat. They mm -hmm. thought they thought that means she can't be believed. Exactly. Uh, and you had tweeted, you tweeted these public statements about how much, using the word hate, how much you hate Donald Trump, hate mm -hmm. him passionately. Mm -hmm. And so that was presented to the jury about uh, by the Trump lawyers, like, well, you can't listen to her. Yes, they had a very big point to make, and that was that I hated him so much that I made up this story or lifted it from a TV procedural drama mm -hmm. and said to E. Jean, let's get Donald Trump and let's pretend he raped you at Bergdorf's and let's get a lot of money for it, um, which isn't my style. And also... Donald Trump wasn't president when he raped her. He was a guy. As you have heard E. Jean say, uh, he's just a guy. And he was just a guy who was known to be a womanizer. So it wasn't, 
there was no political agenda other than telling the truth about what happened to my friend by a man who later went into politics and later became president. But certainly he was not, neither of those things when he assaulted her.